What's up, Punk Normal? I am here with Jim Limberg from Pennywise, the Black Pacific, and most importantly, Rass. How's it going today, man? It's going great. How you doing? I'm doing pretty good, man. It's a nice Friday here up in Canada. What's going on down in California? Uh, it's a beautiful uh, Friday evening. We've had great weather lately and uh, just been uh, uh, getting ready for the weekend. Uh, we played Riot Fest in Chicago with uh, Pennywise and did uh, some uh, jams with Raps as well. So I've been a busy guy. So I'm looking forward to the weekend to doing absolutely nothing. <laughs> no kidding. So uh, this is a, a good day for Raps, no? You guys just dropped the new EP, correct? Yep, got a new P E P out. It's uh on uh, once again it's on Bird Attack Records and uh it's called My Home and uh we're really stoked on it. It it, it came out really, really nice, especially the vinyl. They did a really great job on the vinyl. It looks it's pretty eye catching and uh everyone seems to be pretty stoked on it, so we're happy. Yeah, for sure. We actually just had uh Garrett on the show not too long ago and he was talking about his, his vinyl company can do a lot of neat stuff with the, all the different colors and designs and stuff, for sure. Yeah, you know, Garrett has just been amazing to work with. Uh, he's one guy that's really putting his heart and soul and a lot of passion into the scene. You know, uh, the whole skate punk scene is still around and still kicking, and uh, we're still playing great shows. There's a lot of great bands out there, but there's just not... Uh, as many people who are doing the type of things that Garrett's doing. And I, I think, yeah, he really deserves a lot of credit for, uh, really keeping the scene alive. He, he's been over at Groves Rock Festival in Belgium and, uh, he was over at, um, punk rock picnic in Slovenia with us and out there interviewing bands and, you know, setting up the whole bird attack merchant vinyl booth. And, and, uh, he just, doing it because he loves it and it's very very cool to have someone like him you know supporting us and supporting rafts and uh you know guys on fire right now so was that uh rasp was able to play that punk rock holiday thing or is that were you talking about pennywise that was pennywise we, we um rafts has barely been outside of our zip our zip code <laughs> but, <laughs> um uh pennywise that was over in uh sylvania for uh uh, a big Pennywise tour we did over the summer, but um, I'd love Raph to get on some shows like that. We did It's Not Dead Festival out in uh, 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 San Bernardino a few weeks back, and that was a big festival that had like Dropkick Murphys and Rancid and a bunch of bands, and, and we opened the main stage basically when everyone was still coming in from the parking lot, but uh, it was really cool to to uh, play our first big festival, and uh, we had a lot of fun with that. So uh, hopefully we'll see Rafts in Europe and Canada someday. Who knows? I was just going to ask if you guys had any, had any plans to head north with Rafts. You know, it's difficult just because obviously Pennywise takes up a lot of the time, and, and we're doing uh, we're putting out a new record with Pennywise and, and uh, things like that. But... I, I think uh, probably next year sometime I'll be able to spare a week and hopefully we can go out with another band that, you know, people like and do some uh, cool shows. And I always have a great time going through Canada. So uh, I'd love to, to do some kind of North American tour and, you know, just need people to demand it. <laughs> I'm demanding it right now, man. I okay, cool. I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll chalk it up. <laughs> Yeah, I think the last time Pennywise came through was a couple of years ago. I, you guys were, you had TBR, Teenage Ball Rocket opening for you. It was a yeah, really good you show. Know, we, uh, yeah, I love those guys. And In fact, uh, I think Ray butt dialed me today. <laughs> <laughs> Ray from TBR. I, I think they're I down in the, Australia, the, aren't they right now? Oh, really? Yeah. So maybe he was, because we're on our way down there. Maybe he wanted to uh, give me a shout out. But uh, yeah. Uh, we were trying to get there up to Canada this year and we had just, uh, I guess you would call it administrative issues uh, two different times where, you know, we, we set up, tried setting up the tour and then someone said, Hey, I've got something going on that weekend. And, you know, and then we tried to do it again and the exact same thing happened. So we need to get our shit together a little bit, as they say, because, 
you know, uh, it, it's, we've been wanting to get back up there and do another tour. So hopefully, uh, you know, they'll still be waiting for us to get up there and we'll have a new album out. So that'll be even better. When, when can we expect that? Is that next year then you're saying like early next year? Um, yeah, probably, hopefully early next year, you know, these, uh, I always want these things to move a lot quicker than they do, but, um, I just, well, we finished most of the album back in, uh, July, but then we had that, that summer tour in, uh, Europe. And then I just finished three of the last songs. So it, we still need to mix the album. And then after that, it's doing all the artwork, et cetera. So, um, uh, still a little work to be put into it, but I usually once we deliver all that stuff, it's like three months after that. So probably the, just after the first year, I'm hoping. Perfect. And that's going to be on Epitaph as well, or undecided at the yep, moment? Yep, that'll, that'll be on Epitaph. I was trying to think. The only time you guys didn't release on them was that MySpace thing you guys did a while back, right? Have you always been Yeah, Epitaph? that was a, that was kind of an anomaly of, uh, at the time, it uh, really seemed like a really shaky time for uh, record labels at that time. And we had kind of, we'd, we'd put out, you know, several albums and, and we're in the same cycle. And, and that was right when everyone was suggesting like, you know, here, it'd be a good time to just give the record away because of the way the whole uh, downloading thing was going. And uh, they came at us with that proposition and we were like, you know, this might be something interesting to try for a band like ours. that's kind of just been doing the same thing over and over. And, um, I think it was a good experiment, but, uh, you know, in the end, my space didn't really work out. <laughs> <laughs> no. the, the thing called Facebook kind of took over. So I guess we should have put it out on Facebook records, but, um, um, yeah, you know, it was, a, it was a, a cool experience, but uh, Epitaph's always been our home, and they were very cool about letting us try something different, but um, it's good to know that we're, we're back where we belong, and, and uh, Brett's really psyched on the new record, so that's always good. Yeah, for sure. I'm stoked for it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Cool, man. So uh, I actually I read your book, like many of us young punk rockers have, and... <laughs> I was amused mm-hmm. by that one story where you you're at a parent teacher interview, and uh, the lady was saying that she knew you from your song "Fuck Authority," and you were yeah. kind of like trying to distance yourself from it. And you, you said yeah. that you blamed Fletcher for writing it. So it, was it him who actually wrote it, or were you just trying to deflect the, the chaos? Uh, it really was, you know. And I'll tell you something uh, funny about that: the, the record was pretty much finished, and he came up with that at the last minute and I listened to it and, and I heard like, you know, when the music came in, I'm all, this sounds pretty cool. Like it's pretty catchy. And, and and then I heard fuck authority and I kind of went, Oh dude, come on, man. (laughs) Yeah. This is, uh, uh, because when we were younger, there's a band called wasted youth who came out kind of at, I would say at the end of, the the first wave of hardcore punk and and that was the most punk song you know everyone knew like wow fuck authority i can't believe they wrote a song called fuck authority so i personally i was like dude we can't do a song called fuck authority but fletcher was adamant like this is the best song that's ever been written of all time so (laughs) i was like okay you know whatever we'll give it a shot and and you know for people late to the band they kind of feel that as a finding song but I have a definitely have a strange relationship with it there's times when I feel like you know used in the right way it's a it's a great song that inspires people to challenge convention and and challenge corrupt authority in all its forms and God knows in the United States these days we need to do that many in many different fashions whether it's corrupt, corrupt police corrupt politicians corrupt uh religious uh, leaders you know it seems like pr- corruption is absolutely rampant so in that sense it's, it's a great song and then then there's other times where i'm you know like going geez i'm a dad of three daughters you know how can i sing a song called fuck authority i'm the ultimate authority figure so uh 
I've definitely had a complicated relationship with that song, but uh, it, when it and it definitely was played out in the book when it came to going to kindergarten, it was I definitely tried to pretend we had other songs that were more important than that one. <laughs> <laughs> to hear the rest of this interview, check out punkanormalactivity.com or use one of your favorite podcast apps such as SoundCloud, Google Play, iTunes, and more. Hope you guys check it out.